just summarizing from last session okay so what is big data it's a data problem which is created by volume velocity variety where traditional systems cannot handle and to solve that problem what we do we use distributed technology and these technologies are known as big data technology so definition is only from these two perspective any problem any data problem which is causing this problem so because of the data increasing in size or the uh, the variety of the data is coming differently or the velocity so that is that problem is a big data problem so if you are still not clear please refer to the video we have covered it in very very detail there now the second thing which is we covered is what's the difference between business intelligence and big data so to summarize that so bi tools are only able to give answer to what happened so why the uh, the sales went up 30% new accounts opened by 50% okay so these are the examples which bi kpis can give so kpis can give okay my customer attraction percentage is 5% in the last per year this year time it is 3% so it has come down so those are what bi tools kpis are going to tell you which essentially means bi tools is explaining what happened okay so bi tools are explaining what happened so what we really want to know is why it happened why did the sales go down and what will happen in future so we are into the world of we want to predict so where is where the predictive analytics and so on comes in we also wants to get a deeper understanding of the data so this is where you try to take all the structured and unstructured data and so on. so let me give you an example here so with bi let's say the sales forecasting was saying that your yeah, sales went down and you were not able to answer understand why it happened so for that to understand why it happened you need to understand what are all the customer touch points correct so you need to understand all the customer touch points so let's look at all the customer touch points so one of the touch, customer touch points will be the web online interaction on the website online interaction with website what information can we get from there we can get the the web logs the behavior of which uh, item the uh, the person has clicked on the site which is the page he navigated which is the place he recent the spend the most time browsing over our site and so on so these are information which is available in the web logs it is pretty semi unstructured or semi structured form the web log file okay depending upon what kind of web logs we are looking at so this is one in interaction the other interaction is customer service interaction you might be interacting with customer service through emails you might be interacting with phone calls and so on so with these phone calls and emails now we will be able to understand whether he was happy or not what is his problems and so on so if you generalize this problems you will be able to find out why there is an increase in sales or why there is a decrease in sales similarly based on his online behavior pattern you can find it out similarly there are many other channels customer channels which are there each of which will give large amount of data either in structured unstructured all sort of form so unless you bring all this together and analyze you will not able to understand what why it happened and traditional bi systems doesn't do it because they don't have the capability to process unstructured data so what big data is going to bring in is 
since it's going to solve the variety problem of the data it is going to help you understand and analyze this large volume of data which is there in the web logs emails phone uh, phone call records and so on and this is going to enable so this is just one example so big data doesn't mean that you need to have all this unstructured data even with structured data you can have a big data problem if the volume is growing too fast or the velocity of the data at which the structured data is coming is too fast so this is the reason between what we are talking about with traditional bi and big uh, big data uh, solutions so we call it as big data analytics any questions still here what is big data what is because we have already done it i am just trying to summarize it so that it will be easier for all of you guys so now let me go back to the the discussion of today and the discussion of today is the fundamentals of big data there is schema on right data local processing and so on so let's introduce some of these fundamentals any questions till here please let me know now okay so no questions i am going to introduce to the fundamentals again sorry for the folks who has attended this first time today there was a small introductory session which we have done so in case we want to repeat that we will repeat that at a later point of time uh, but the videos are already available so now to, let's start with the today's session the focus is understand the fundamentals behind big data understand the technology fundamentals so this is our focus today so this is what we want to do so let's start with it so let's start with a traditional database system so any database system has two parts so first part is it enables storage of data okay. so this is our first part the second part is once the data is stored it enables querying or processing of the data so this is what a typical data store supports an rdbms or any data store it allows to store the data in some form and enables processing so now let's look at a typical application a typical application will have a web front end okay. so this is the website html or something so let's say in today's world it will be html javascript and so on okay. so this is the front end of the application i am looking at the architecture of the application then you will have a service layer which you have a application tier app tier here is where all the application specific logics are written application logic is written so the web front end interacts with the application layer so in this case if you are using servlets and jsps and so on it will be here then it interacts with the data store so it interacts with the data store so let's say this is your rdbms engine Okay, so for now, let's say it's an Oracle or a DB2 engine. So you connect to this database engine. Now the most important part to notice, as as the volume grows up, the database engine don't store data locally on that machine. It is usually stored in a more reliable structure, which is called as the storage attached networks so it is a sand or a nas network attached storage huh? or a sand so this is where it, you actually store the data so the physically it is in this drives and there is a network connection between the dbms engine and this particular engine this gives 
two capabilities so that the DB engines can scale and so on. So the network, uh, the whole data is pretty much stored here. So this is the typical application architecture. Any questions on this architecture? This is what is happening today. So what we miss out usually is this last part. This last part is what we mean. We assume that database is storing all the data locally. Most of the time it is not. As volume increases, we store the data in SAN or NAS. And this is usually stored at a different machine. If this is very high bandwidth, but it is stored separately. So now, let's say we are talking about a petabyte or a terabyte of data. So let's say one petabyte of data. Now if you have to have a one petabyte, obviously it will not be stored in the engine, it will be stored in the SAN and NAS. So it will be stored here. Which essentially means if you are trying to query process or anything, there will be a request going to the DBMS engine. DBMS engine is going to bring the data because the processing has to happen here in the DBMS engine. So all the data is going to get pulled from here to the DBMS engine. So there is a first bottleneck here which is getting created. Okay. So the first bottleneck is here is network traffic or network bandwidth let me call it. So this is your first problem or yeah network congestion. That's a better way to look at. Yeah, thanks, Prashant. So, so this is what is happening. First bottleneck here. Yeah. The second bottleneck is the read of the data. So let's say you have worked with in many applications. Whenever there is a performance issues, finally where did it nail down to? The performance issues are either nailed down to network bottleneck okay or IO bottleneck okay so this is the two places where usually the bottleneck lies CPU bottleneck or memory bottlenecks is usually very less this is only incorrect coding basically so if you are not a good developer obviously yeah you have a memory and CPU problem. But otherwise, infrastructure wise, you always get into network and IO bottlenecks. Now, one of the network bottleneck which we always saw. IO bottleneck is another most important time consuming thing. Why is the IO bottleneck? Because we are reading from this drive, the SAN or the NAS drive. And that read is causing us problems because there are a lot of drives here and everybody is accessing to read the data. There is only one set of access mechanism there that it is physically rotating spindles which has to be scanned through assuming it's not a SSDs or something. In SSDs the IO bottleneck is still better. It is compressed and it is much useful. But if it is not SSDs, solid state devices. Okay, so. When I refer SSDs, it's solid state devices. This is the new trend in storing data. Where there is no mechanical parts. In all other drives, there is mechanical parts. Where the spindle rotates, tries to search the data and get it. And gradually we are moving it. It's only that SSDs are costlier. So they are called the flash drives also. So you can look at those as the large scale data stores going forward. So the problem is, there is this one petabyte of data has to be read and usually the bottleneck is there in IO. Why the bottleneck? Because there is such some bunch of spindles which are reading it and it gets exhausted because you can so much only spindles you can have. And also everybody is accessing the same data every time it is coming there and searching 
So that is another reason why there is a bottleneck there. So you have an I/O bottleneck, you have a network bottleneck in a typical application. Apart from that, you can see that between RDBMS and application logic also there is a network traffic which is going through, and hence there is a potential bottleneck here as well. So the lessons learned from all this is, if you move the processing closer to the data. These bottlenecks can be avoided and it's common sense. I don't think anybody has to tell us that, that if you move processing near to the data, bottlenecks can be eliminated. Network bottleneck at least will go off. Okay, so network bottleneck can be eliminated. So this is where the first fundamental starts off. Okay, fundamental number one is how do I eliminate network bottleneck? To eliminate network bottleneck, I need to push the processing as much as closer to the data. Okay, so this is fundamental number one. Let's look at the fundamental number two. Now, assume that you have pushed the data towards each row. Now, RDMMS has a one fundamental limitation that it stores data in the form of records. So each record is stored. A typical record size will be let's say 100 KB or maybe uh, 10 KB, 100 KB is the usually the record size. So which means the access of the records from this disk is basically at 100 KB at a time. So there are million records. So million into 100 KB is accessed at one point of time. Okay. So this is how the access mechanism is happening at the by the RD members itself. Now, when we are talking about big data or large data, we don't process usually 10 records or 100 records. We process most of the time full data. Which means I have to get all the 100 million records or 1000, 100,000 100, million records, whatever it is. I have to get all of those data to process it. So I am reading record by record, record by record, record by record. It's going to take long time. So the best way is, is there a possibility I can read records in bulk? Now, why would records in bulk save time? So for that you need to understand what is known as what goes when you try to read a record. When you try to read a record, you have to imagine what is happening at the disk level. The first thing which happens is it the disk, the spindle rotates to seek the position where the data is or the record is. So seek the position. So that is the first activity which happens. Once the seek, the position is known, it will say read 100 bytes, read 200 bytes, two, read 100k bytes and so on. So read is happening after that. So now for every record, if you do the seek, then read, seek, read, seek, read, it's going to take long time. So usually seek is let's say, 100 times lesser than the read time usually because seek is faster not that fast but yeah it's a activity which needs to be done so so what we are saying is we can eliminate this seek for every record okay so we can eliminate this seek for every record if we store the data in bulk or if we read the data in bulk, no need to store the data. If you read the data in bulk, that is good enough. So that is what Hadoop will try to do or the processing will do. We will read the record in bulk to eliminate the seek time which is available for seeking every record at a time. So this is one more solution. So the second solution which we discuss now is Store and read records in bulk. Store and read records in bulk. So that seek time 
can be reduced or eliminated so it will be only one seek type for every block of data and this is precisely the reason why you would see that when we look at hadoop what is hadoop hadoop will store data in blocks so that it can read records in bulk okay so this is another fundamental now let's look at the third fundamental here the problem see as thousands of users come in millions of users come in the stress is that application layer you will start scaling you will put more machines but the dbmb is you are not able to scale so you are not able to scale the dbmb because you need to have acid properties on to it you need to have acid this it stands for atomicity consistency isolation and durability to bring this kind of characteristics you need to make sure that there is a single place where all the locks are maintained and all the transactions are done and the integrity of the data is preserved the replication is controlled through one place so all that is done so that i'm not going to get into the acid property right now but yeah so to ensure that there is acid the scalability of this layer is limited which essentially means as volume increases your data processing capability okay becomes a problem even data storage becomes a problem as the volume increases so what you want to do is you want to split this data stored and processing much faster so the third fundamental is we are saying is you need to distribute the processing processing and storage for scalability okay now you can do and distribute the storage this is also a san and nas is also a somewhat of a distributed storage but the problem is it is not enforcing data local processing okay and second thing is it is a shared disk architecture where the disk is shared between all the processes so all the processing logic you can scale but still the disk is common so shared disk architecture has a problem so shared disk avoid shared disk and go to shared nothing architecture in a shared nothing architecture what happens is let's say you have a machine machine has a cpu okay machine has memory machine has a disk so what we are saying is in a shared nothing architecture all these are dedicated to one machine so let's say there is 100 100 gb of data here in this disk only this processor is going to process that 100 gb of data and it is using going to use this memory now another machine is there that will also have 100 gb of data that processor will do data local processing so there is no sharing of data between this 100 gb and the other 100 gb each one will act independently so this is your fourth fundamentals in big data i will stop here and take some questions uh, from a fundamental perspective and then there are two more or three more fundamentals which we need to cover before we can go for an end to end example any questions till here no questions you can unmute and speak the questions if there is again what i try to do is explain the fundamentals behind an application architecture i am trying to find where are the bottlenecks for large scale data processing okay identified that network congestion is one part we have identified that data local processing could another help in another way shared nothing architecture could help in another way in a when the data grows it is better to have more processors more disk to process the data that will help you scale so these are the fundamentals which is there we should also look at 
storing and reading data in bulk if your requirement if your requirement is for bulk data load and read which is typically the case in big data so that is the reason all these four fundamentals are being used any questions i let me since it's a very silent group i will ask couple of guys to understand so ram is a, yeah go ahead one question right in shared network architecture uh, shared nothing architecture as well um the processing should be shared right then how do i know where my records are getting stored okay so let me take that one second let me save this picture let me save it in a proper place so that i can share this with you okay so the question is if there is absolutely no sharing we'll come to that picture again later should it there not be any shared sharing at all because let's say these are the three machines which we have each machine is having its own data let's say 100 gb here and so on another 100 gb here right and another 100 gb here and it is each one is doing their own processing so the question is individually processing is all great okay so we are going to process the data here we are going to process the data here so i'll say p1 p2 p3 process will run but usually the business case is such that the data is not looked at in isolation data is also to be combined right so 100 gb ka processing p2 is doing p3 is doing let's say sorry this is p3 so when it is doing if in a shared nothing architecture there is no talking of the data between these three so this processor only has visibility to this so let's say we have an employee file which is like 300 gb so this is a employee file which had 300 gb of file 300 gb employee file so this is our problem statement and we stored this 300 gb in these three machines 100 100 100 because we want to do shared nothing architecture we put all the processor and memory at each of the places now in the in this part i want to find select sum of salary i am writing a query on that because i usually prefer to write logic in the form of query so select summary from employee sum of salary from employee table this is what you want which essentially means you need to read this 100 add up all the salary 100 add up all the salary 100 add up all the salary but the result has to be between adding all of these as well so that means shared nothing architecture will also need some amount of distributed coordination to make it work correct so that is the thing which you are coming to so there should be a distributed coordination between the machines the shared nothing machine see this is the questions correct partha i just want to make sure that i understand the question so that i can answer it yeah 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 okay so the question is clear now the the biggest problem which we saw is reading the data is our problem reading the data because there is seek type for every record correct so if you do data local processing and seek this records that part we have eliminated the bottleneck okay our bottleneck was with network because we are transferring bulk bulk of the data 
Now, in this case, if you see it, select some of the salary. So, employee may have 1000 fields. We are only interested in one field. We can do a local reduction of adding up all the salary. So, only one attribute will come out from this machine. Correct? Right? So, this is the salary, sum of the salary from this machine. Sum of salary from this machine. Similarly, sum of salary for will come from this machine. And that will be a very small byte. Correct? Or maybe for that matter, forget byte. It can be a 100 KB also. Or maybe a 100 MB also. It is much better than transferring this 100 GB, 100 GB, 100 GB to the database engine and processing it there. So the principle behind big data processing is you calculate, do this local processing, local calculation, reduce the data to a very smaller means and then use the network traffic to transfer this to some other machine, process it there. So we have already reduced the big data problem into a small data problem because the whole bulk of the data is getting locally processed and only part of the data is getting distributedly processed. So this is the fundamental. So fundamental four is, which we are saying is, uh, reduce or do as much as possible data local processing. And this is where we start getting into Hadoop as well. So if we do this, our bottlenecks will go away. So there is nothing like each one is can be independently processed and all. There is nothing like that. But what we are saying is, if we can make it majority of the things locally processed, you can still eliminate and get a much better performance. But that does it answer your question? Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, so this is the another fundamental. So data local processing. Okay. So uh, just to extend the same question, uh, mm -hmm. so if, if we are saying that if we add any condition, say that now, say that the employee is a kind of manager or something and mm -hmm. extend uh, that query there, you are saying that get the sum of salary from employee table, and if I say if I have to get only manager salary, mm -hmm. and how will the three P1, P2, P3 would know uh, uh, where where exactly this, uh, I mean, do we really store it in a random way and all the spindles rotate and find out in all P1, P2, P3 parts? Or is yeah. it, will it check in all the virtual disks? Yes. Yeah. So let's look at, let's extend this question further and see. Okay. So let's remove this question. Let's put the other question in place. So it is select uh, sum of salary. from employee where employee age greater than 25 and employee gender is equal to male. Okay. So let's say this is the question. Now the question is how does this whole thing works? Does it still needs to scan this 100 GP or can it have some amount of index or something which the RDBMS does, okay, and uh, get through, okay. So, first, make it very clear, I am not talking about Hadoop. Okay? I want to be very clear, I am not talking about Hadoop. Okay? Because in Hadoop, there will be no index to begin with. So, it is going to scan for all of those. But if it is not Hadoop, yeah, you can create your own index, okay, which is HBase or whatever it is, you can create your own index. So, so this can be searched without reading the whole 100 GB. But what Hadoop will do is, so now let's look at what Hadoop can, Hadoop or any distributed processing which is not having an indexing solution. Okay, what it will do? It will say that I need to anyway apply this predicate, okay across all the data. So why don't I push down this predicate down to each machine locally. So as I am reading this 100 GB, I will keep on applying this filter. 
then only that rest of the data is going to go for processing. So I can push this processing down to each node. So each node is going to apply the filter. The reason we can do that filtering is because the data is, the filtering is at the record level. Correct? So if the filtering was at the record level, I could easily push in this filtering right at the node level. Correct? But for some reason, I want to do group by, let's say, city. And I want to get sum of salary and city group by city. So what happens? I cannot do any of this grouping and calculation at the local level. So what I will do is, I can still apply this predicate at the each of the machine level. So each this filtering will still happen at the machine level. So it will bring up only records where employee age is 25 and gender is male. It will bring those data out. Then it will try to get the field salary and city and pass it to the coordinator. Okay. And then this coordinator is going to, for every city, it is going to calculate the sum of the cell. So this is how it will work. It will try to do as much as possible of data local process. Remember, this is the most important. It is not to say everything is data local process. It will try as much as possible to push it to data local process. And when you look at Hadoop also, you will see that it will try it to the maximum. Okay. After that, if it's still not possible, it will try to do a distributed call. Okay. So the idea is to make it the performance as much as possible. So did that answer your question? Who was that actually? Yeah, this is Soma. I'm sorry, I didn't answer earlier. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, that answer. Yeah, that that answer my question. Okay, so Ankit had a, another perspective. So the question which he wants to bring in is from a data local processing, I'm only maintaining the consistency of data in one machine, and I don't need lock across the machine. That's not always true, okay? Because there's nothing concept of a lock as such here. Because if you are reading this record and this records, don't assume that locking is only, there's no need of a distributed lock and all. It is not the case because you will need in situations where you need a distributed lock, okay? So you might need a distributed lock because of replications and so on. Distributed locking will still be a problem at point of time. So let's not talk about locks right now. Okay, locking is not a clear way to look at from this perspective that being bringing a shared nothing architecture avoids locking. That's the incorrect statement to look for. Because if you look at the art of scalability, we what we have done is we have broken down and started using multiple machines to solve our large data problem. Correct. We have done distributed processing. That is what we have tried to do now. Distributed processing. Which means we introduced multiple machines. We introduced multiple machines. So what happens is, with every machine introduced, we also brought in a mean time before failure. Uh, MTTF, BF, correct? So every machine has a lifeline. So the number of machines which now the every disk we have brought in and every disk has a access type every disk has a lifetime and this can fail so when it fails you will lose the data so you need replication backup and so on and when you get into that problem your distributed locking is not going to hold true okay so don't worry about this distributed locking or this mean time before failure right now hmm? Uh, we will come back to that at a later point of time when we start ruling replication. So let's not worry about this concept right now here. So only worry about a distributed share nothing architecture enables you to do as much as data, data local processing as possible 
and pushing it down as much as possible. Okay, so Partha had a question that variety is also a big data problem. Okay, so let's go to variety problem that is coming up next. Okay, so let me say this is the shared nothing architecture concept. So, so let's go and look at the third part of it. Okay. So very very interesting third part and Partha has brought up at the right time there is unstructured data, semi-structured data. What is unstructured data? A data where schema is not well defined. Okay. Schema in, in an unstructured data there is no schema in fact, no defined schema. In a semi-structure, there is not too much well-defined and it grows and so on. And then our structured is well-defined. We covered that in the last video. So please refer to the video if you are not re referred to that. Okay. So coming to how do we handle or where do variety also brings out any problem with the data. So what is the problem with variety? Let's take an example. I am a company I have let's take a hypothetical situation for now which will make it easier to understand and then you can pro extrapolate to anything I have employee play slips okay for some reason assume that I am a fool and I didn't store the structure of the pace in a database I only printed into a PDF the data of employees and created all the PDFs and kept it. I don't have any database. I, my database is only this employee PDF files, payslip PDF files. Okay, so it's a payslip PDF files. This is all what I have. And I'm going to do the same salary processing which I want to do, which we discussed just now. So these PDF files are going to be bigger. So I will, let's say I will have 100 TB of PDF files every month. Okay. And I want to find sum of salary of all the employees whose age is greater than 25. I'm having PDF. People will say you should structure it, you should store it. But this is the fact. I don't have it. And this is exactly the problem when you look at unstructured data. So when you look at unstructured data, let's say you have the call center logs, the emails, let's say. So emails sent by customer. Okay. So this, I want to analyze it. There is absolutely nothing. I have a PDF file. Now why I didn't take this example is, there is one step from here to identifying what you want to analyze. That step I, I want to skip it for now because that comes into the area of text analytics. So what to analyze? Here I am very clear that the payslip will have fields like basic salary. It will have PF and so on. Correct? Or it will have tax. These are the fields which will be there and you will know precisely how to parse it and get it and so on. Okay. But the problem is parsing and getting it all that. So this PDF now is stored in our three machines. Okay. Now what are the choices which we have? There are two choices. One is when I store this file, okay, I can parse this whole file, I can extract all the fields in this, create a very good structure and store it into these places. Correct? So that is my first option. First option is structure the unstructured data and store it in a database kind of a concept. It need not be database, but it can be in a data store, I would say. So that when you, when I refer a data store, it, it, it is RDBMS plus NoSQL. 
okay and we'll see what a noise scale later point some time but don't worry it's similar to an rdbms but without the relational schema so i took the employee pdf files which are of 100 terabytes and i want to do the sum of salary this processing i want to do select sum of salary from employee where age greater than 25 and gender equal to male and maybe city also but for now let's say this is what i want to run on this bunch of pdfs so what are my option the natural choice is as you are storing this whole information try to get salary age gender and put it. okay so i'll structure it the other option is uh, i will say okay i want to do a group by city also then immediately you say okay parse the file again get the city also store it in structure then one smart guy is going to come and say hey don't do like that all the fields all the fields in the pdf file please parse it okay and store it in the data data store this is our natural choice so that you can start writing any queries and so on but you did this okay you did this also after 3 years you started going and analyzing all the queries which is written okay all the queries which we wrote in this data we found that only 5% of the fields are used which essentially means we wasted 95% of the field parsing upfront and we stored it structured we wasted the storage space we wasted the we also wasted the processing at that time so every pdf processing is going to take a lot of time so we wasted lot of it while we needed only 5% of the field okay secondly tomorrow if there is a new pdf which has come through and so on you have to always keep updating your parsing logic even though you don't know whether that field is even going to be there or not because let's say for some reason a new taxation came into play and says it added some like like professional tax professional tax this is around very very small amount we never wanted to analyze it but since it has come now you start changing the whole process you added it and all so this becomes a mess the process of structuring the data upfront process of structuring an unstructured data upfront leads to chasing your own tail kind of okay so leads to total wastage and loss because you might not need all the fields so what big data says is we will do what is known as just in time parsing or more properly known as schema on read compared to schema on write so rdbms is actually schema on write because if you have to store any data let's say this pdf file you have to store it into an rdbms first you will say okay i'll let me create a relational schema let me parse it and put it to it in big data we say the data is going to be so huge and it will be so vast and so variety and so on that if you start chasing your whole development process to structure it and store it do the data modeling in 6 months uh, decide it by the time it change your data has come and so on this problem becomes exponential and you will not get any business value at all so the way is store the data as is and when you want to run this query let us apply a dynamic schema at that time 
that is we will apply a schema on read rather than applying schema on the right so this is the concept and how you handle variety part of the problem to solve the variety part of the problem you use this technique schema on read instead of schema on write obviously there is an overhead of let's say you write this query 10 times so every time it is getting processed and parsed so that is where the intelligence will come in saying that if i have to do this every time it might be better off structuring the data so it usually in a life cycle of big data this is how it starts with you first take the data put it into the hadoop or whatever it is don't worry about structuring it when you want to read it you will directly apply the schema and read it now if you think that that is going to be repetitive you know precisely which fields you are interested in apply the processing on that store it separately and use it for recurring use purpose but majority of the queries in big data are not recurring majority of the data explorations are one time or ad hoc or on demand in that case schema on read is a much better choice so remember in your project before you structure the data rethink is it worth to structure the data up front right now or should i structure the data when i really need it if you are needing that particular piece of information every day every hour structure it otherwise let dump the data so hadoop or the big data repository contains all the raw data as is okay so schema on read is basically ankit also wanted to summarize that saying schema on read is applying a dynamic schema to the data at run time when you are reading the data when you are reading the data you apply the schema and read so that is schema on read and this is another principle which helps you handle the big data problem is that clear i hope partha the variety problem is handled to some level i know is not handled to the full place okay because you still need to re look at the videos i think once what is the unstructured uh, variety problem and then once you see this this is one solution for handling unstructured content okay solution for handling unstructured content one is schema on read there are many more as we go through it we will see it okay so let me go back to the fundamentals schema on read versus schema on write so i hope this is clear data local processing move the processing as close to the data avoid network traffic clear by moving local storage do block storage to avoid local seek time okay so this we didn't cover and this we didn't cover so there are two things which we have not covered let's take few of these things so disk read through parallel okay so so let me do this what is this this is schema on read or variety problem schema on read okay so now let's look at the distributed okay just hold on one second i'm waiting here sorry uh, so i think we'll continue for another 5 minutes it should finish it off i hope you can hear me now okay so what i'm saying is we said we are going to have multiple drives multiple machines each having its own disk so let's say this is its disk this is its disk this is its disk now every disk has its own limitation of how many bytes per second it can render 
bytes per second a uh, disk can read the data or disk can read and write this is based on the spindle number of spindles the head and so on on the disk so let's say there is 10 of this so there is a 10 let's say we say 100 megabytes per second it can read so 100 mbps is what the read rate is from this disk so you have 100 mbps from this disk also okay and so on so you have 100 mbps from this disk you have 100 mbps from this disk okay and another 100 mbps from this disk so what essentially means is the more disk you have the more throughput you are getting is that clear so with distributed processing of large scale data sets what we are also doing is we are also getting increased throughput otherwise what would have happened is we had one SAN so let's go back to our first principle first picture so this was our first picture so we had one SAN correct we had a single SAN and there were spindles here so let's say there were throughputs which were coming because of these spindles from here now if you have many of these the throughput increases exponentially so that is what we are trying to do here so when we are saying that when we are doing distributed lo data local processing we get higher throughput okay so this is all the performance things which we are getting out we use schema on read data local processing avoid network storage block storage this throughput and the last important one is usually in a big data stuff we usually try to store the data once so you are trying to do a weblog processing okay so if you are trying to do a weblog processing you collect all the weblogs and see it in this case our salary also your pdf files you have collected and kept it and you never update it so usually in a big data thing it is write once and read many times the characteristics of the data is like that it is not meant for a transaction system like in our rdbms where in an rdbms you write read write read write read you can do it continuously but in a big data system or a big data application usually the demand is different you bring the data you store it the data once and then you read it many times so it is the characteristics of what is known as write once read many times which is warm so most of our discussion going forward is going to be a worm based discussion which means our data is never going to get updated it is going to be only append only so we will cover these two things a little bit more next time when we start with Hadoop. Okay. So today what we did is we focused on the fundamentals of big data. Schema on read, data local processing, network storage, portal, this throughput and work. And there was one question which was mentioned which I wanted to cover at the end. Which is the real application of Hadoop. Okay. So I think last time we introduced big data but we didn't understand the usage of big data. What is the real application? So let's look at real applications for big data so that you get the examples. The first and foremost is fraud detection. So let's say you get lot of credit card transactions and so on and you want to identify frauds in these transactions so what you are going to do you are not only trying to collect the transactions 
you are going to collect the user profiles you are going to collect the merchant profile because the merchant who is sending the credit card let's say i'm just taking one example okay so merchant profile and so many other data now this is all structured data there is no unstructured data here. okay you can find you you already knows the fraud examples correct you already know a few fraud examples so what you do is you process this data and tries to derive patterns which are similar to the fraud example and for this you will use machine learning and so on but where does big data come into this processing is going to take lot of time and this is where big data is going to come and help you so this is one example where you have a large processing need okay large processing need for structured data and you can use big data processing okay now the other use case is usually around cost efficiency one is where you have a netiza system or a teradata system your data is growing from 100 db to tb is to petabytes so hard to petabyte it will never reach also in netiza it will cause problems there already so let's say it goes to 100 tb ranges what happens is what they say is if you increase this volume you need to buy big boxes to of netiza to process it okay now each box comes with a cpu license so as the data increases your license cost becomes unbearable so we use hadoop and other distributed processing because they are open source and cheap and they run on not so great hardware so i would say is commoditized hardware which is cheaper so it is not solving anything radically different all the same processing which you did in netaza it is going to do it in hadu no different process okay so it is just trying to bring so see netaza its uh, ankit your thing is not right because it is not vertical scaling versus horizontal scaling okay because netiza is also going to do horizontal scaling there is no problem with horizontal scaling on netiza okay it is also a distributed mpp kind of an architecture so the problem here is the cost nothing else so the cost is going to be one driver so this is another use case now let's take another important example which is recommendation engines so the this is where you things get tricky okay? so you have a call center here okay so this is the call center guy taking calls hmm? and he is on the call with the customer now he needs to make a recommendation to the customer on some basis so he needs to give some recommendation now how does he make the recommendation it is based on the previous historical data and based on users who are similar to this customer who is calling so there is a huge back end process which needs to run and calculate the recommendation so this for this also you will use big data recommendation okay again i am doing it at a very higher level once you understand all the technologies in big data we will show you one of these examples how to do it from a block diagram perspective in the architecture sessions we are going to cover that now let's look at another example which is a web log analysis 
So let's say you have a website. You get lot of log files from there. So you can understand the customer behavioral patterns using the website. So this is another use case. Customer behavior patterns. So which which links he's clicking more, which links he's spending more time. Based on that, you can actually derive what the customer is actually interested in. And you can model the customer and give him again recommendations based on his behavior. So this is where the customer is calling the call center. There is another application where customer is calling, his speech is analyzed. Okay. The speech from the speech, the intent it is decided. And based on the intent and the predefined recommendation, you give a contextualized to recommendation. So these are different examples of big data. Again, some of this might not make sense to you guys right now. Okay. But don't worry, we will take some more. So I've taken some complex example. Let me simplify some examples next time and take some, some of the very simple examples which you can do. One, this is one definite big simple example where you are doing nothing but moving the CPU cycles from Netiza to Hadoop. This is an example where again you are using Hadoop for large scale data processing. This is where you are using Hadoop for a next generation analytics. Okay. And so on. So there is a different category. I will cover those uh, in the next sessions. So we will be stopping it here for today. So if there is any questions, let me know.